I'm going to hand out a, a growth staging document that I put together. And it's available on the web, so if you lose this, you can just um, <coughs> Google Kentucky wheat growth stages, and this usually comes up first. So I thought we'd just take a little bit of time in here to dissect down some plants. And so, you know, it, it's really important. Last, this time last year, we worried about a freeze event, right? So we were talked a lot about dissecting for that, but, but that's not the only time we want to know where that wheat head is, right? We need to know that every growing season, whether or not it's jointed or not. And so we had kind of hoped that these plants would be sort of a range of some jointed, some not. They look a little young to me, but we'll go through the exercise, okay? Um, I'm not sure if we'll find very many heads or not um, uh, that are above ground, but, but let's try. So who's dissected before? You have? Sam? No? No? no. Anybody else? Some of you? Okay. So the, we're going to get kind of messy. I'm just going to messy up y'all's table. Um, we'll wipe it off before lunch, promise. Um, but since these are potted plants, we can just go ahead and get the soil off. In, in the field, a lot of times I'll uh, take my razor blade and pull the soil back a little, okay? Just to where you see sort of the white that isn't photosynthesizing and cut it off. And that's how I'll do it in the field. If you try to pull it up or rip it out, sometimes you can damage that, that, that wheat head that might be right at the soil level and it'll be real hard to then find it. So just go ahead and go ahead and get your hands dirty, guys. We'll wash hands in a little bit. Watch. You're not going to get your hands dirty? No, I, I'm watching Come on now. I'm, no, I'm okay. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna get a few of these going just in case. And in that document I gave you, sometimes in the field when it's a real sunny day, it can be easier to, um, you can take a couple of leaf sheets off and hold it up to the sun and you can kind of see a, a dark sort of swollen area and it's, it's photographed in that document, um, sort of a dark line in the stem and that also can show you where that uh, developing wheat head is as well, but. I would go ahead, we got lots of tillers, which is great. I would go ahead and probably pull off gently, if you can, this, the biggest one you have. Because that'll give you, these other ones won't dissect well, they're too small. So I'd get it down to, to one of these. So I usually pull down as many leaf sheaths as I can, usually two. Sometimes that last one's a little tight, so be careful. So out in the field, oh, this is great. So out in the field, even this, this light, what you can do is hold it up and you'll see that, that um, if it's available, if it's there above the ground, you'll see it. And I see it on this one. I'll walk around and show you. Do you see yours? Here. Was I straight shaking the table? Sorry. No, I just, I want to keep this one to show everybody else. But what you can do is, even down here, you see it right here? Cut it here is what I normally do just to find it. If you want to look at it, at this point you know the joint's above ground. And then I'll cut this in half. And then you can start taking off those leaf sheets. Real gentle. If you start gently dissecting, you'll be able to find it. Okay, thanks. Okay? You see it? It's really far down here. Do you see it? It's about right there. If you hold it up to the light, sometimes you can see it better. You're, you're kind of looking, you're kind of looking for a slight, so on mine, I maybe pulled one more leaf off. Do you see that swollen area? Yeah. I barely see it on yours, but I know it's there. It's kind of an indentation on this one. And I think if you pulled this one off, it would look closer to this, but I think it might, you might break. This okay. one might break off. I'm, I have better luck kind of dissecting down and pulling off the leaves, kind of alternating. And so like I said, like in the field, if you turn to page five of this document, sometimes you don't even have to dissect down this far. You don't have to find the head, okay? The biggest part is, is it above the soil level? Right, I think only maybe one or two of these was above the soil level. The others we probably dug down. But in warm temperatures, most of these would probably by the end of 
the week, if we had sun and warm weather, would be jointed. That was the big deal last year, though, when the freeze came, wasn't it? Where yes. Medium... Yes, we were a month ahead, damage, developmentally. The damage wasn't what... I don't understand. We still don't understand why we didn't have damage. I know some people did. I think, Ken, did y'all have damage? Yeah, did, yeah. They had damage. There was a little bit of damage in the Hopkinsville area. Not a whole lot, but that's the rest of the state. That's where I'm from. But there were some guys that killed their whole crop. Like right. The they did. Neighbors kept and this like 85, it did. It did. That's what I so I think our thinking is that maybe if the main stems ended up being killed out, if that happened, we're not sure it did, um, that there was just, it, it was so warm there were enough tillers to go ahead and still give us reasonable um, yield. This but we don't get it. Freeze thing, I don't think people are going to get as jumpy about it next time. No. The last two times they caught the freeze. That's right. It hadn't. That's right. And so we're not sure if it's, if it's a change in genetics uh, and our adaptive cultivars are just more able to withstand a freeze. Uh, we don't know if there's some other environmental trigger that maybe makes the wheat more susceptible, like relative humidity or dew or something like that. We don't really know. I'm trying to work with the state climatologist um, out of, he's housed at, at Western, but he's the state climatologist. He's pay, paid out of the state budget. We're trying to find some money to get a graduate student on it. And so they can look at past freeze events, not only here, but across the nation to understand the environmental conditions that led up to it and whether there were anything that we're missing, right? Instead of temperature only, should we look at temperature times relative humidity or what's going on? Last year they did temperature at different heights like the low. Like I did, yeah, low. me and Chad did, I yeah. I remember seeing it where it was different quite a bit. It is, and we know that, you know, it depends on where you're at in the canopy. But our data here at Princeton, which was actually just right over here is where I had those sensors, um, where that, that node was, because we were at, at FEEC 7, which is two nodes, where that top node was, um, it was the coldest temperature that we hit. That, that region was the coldest that we, we documented. And it still wasn't damaged. <laughs> but out in the field, you can just take off the couple of leaf sheaths like I showed you, hold it up to the light or hold it up towards the sun, and you can see that. And so you'll be able to understand whether or not you're at joining. This is page five of that document. And so that's why in the field, I might pull back a little bit of soil, but I'll just do a clean cut, okay, of that main stem, of, the, of some of the main stems, and then hold it up to the light, and then I know if you're at feet six. Um, we all know that that's going to affect herbicide applications and some other things as well in wheat. So it typically comes a lot sooner than you think. Once you start seeing those knobby nodes, once you see that, you're well, well past FEEC 6. That usually you start seeing those nodes about when you have two joints, which is FEEC 7, which is quite a bit further along. For me, that's the biggest thing about growth staging is knowing when you're at FEEC 6. We don't have any that's flowering, but the other key, really difficult stages to key out is flowering. Super simple, so this is page seven. Super simple to look at a single head and know at what point you're flowering, right? And in wheat, it starts in the middle of the head where the anthers come out. That's beginning flowering, okay? Your fusarium head blight applications for Prosaro caramba, are going to be here. That's your target, okay? It typically will advance up and then spread out, okay? And so by the time you're at full flowering, you've got some anthers that are yellow, which means they just came out within that day or maybe the day before, and then all the way to white. White means it's been out for a while, okay? You see white anthers, you know they've been out for a while. Kirsten Wise and Carl Bradley, who are both pathologists here now, and they, used, they both worked on wheat for many years. They both did some research, and what they found is that if you have to wiggle either early or late, you go late. You go late, and I think it was five to seven days late, right, Kelsey, that you'll have better um, effic efficacy for controlling dawn, okay? You might not have great control for severity, 
but to control dawn, you want to go late. If you go early, you'll not only sacrifice control of FHB, like the disease, but also dawn. You'll have higher dawn. Some studies, I think, that the dawn was just as high with the early um, as a non-treated control. And so you do not want to go early. But then that kind of goes in with the rub of, yeah, it's easy to figure it out on one head. How in the world do you grow stage an entire field? Particularly if you're in heavy residue, which typically has large patches of plants that are not as advanced as others, right? And so in a lot of times in no-till or cold winters, you'll have these really patchy stands and know when to pull that trigger for, it, for a Prosaro or something is, is, it's hard. It's hard. But, like I said, this new research helps us understand that going late's better. It gives us some, some good information. Okay, how many of you are aware of the Kentucky Mesonet, that website? Got one. So it's a weather um, website that actually Stu Foster, the state climatologist, had developed. He's at Western. And so if you just um, go into kymesonet, M-E-S-O-N-E-T, dot org. And so I've been working with him the last few years to develop a growing degree day calculator for wheat. Um, and it's different from the one we have through the University of Kentucky's Ag Weather in that you can specify your planting date and it'll tell you how many growing degree days you've accumulated to right now. And that's, that's one of the first in the nation that we have like that, that you don't have to pay for. So it's really good. Y'all got it up? Yeah. Okay, so at the top, um, there should be applications. So click on applications and go to agriculture. And just home. So if you scroll down to the very bottom, you can see it says growing degree days, corn, wheat, soybeans. So click on wheat. Um, and for wheat, it's going to be planted on a previous year. And then you can pick whatever planting date you had. So I think my planting date was close to October 24th. And so that's what I put in for here. Um, and of course the site, you'll want to choose whichever one's closest to you. The default's going to be Warren County on this website because that's where they're housed. I, I kind of scanned through the growing degree days for different sites across the state. Most of us are just now at Feeks 3, you know, because we're around that 1500 mark that we've accumulated. And it takes about 1400 in our data um, to kind of get to Feeks 3, which I think is spot on. Because um, even here at Princeton, um, if I looked at it, we didn't accumulate around that 1400 until last week. And last week's really when I thought that the plants were coming out of dormancy, greening up, and ready for the first nitrogen application. Before that, they just looked pitiful. And you'll have certain people that are like, oh no, it looks terrible, what can I do? Yeah. Just like, let it have sun. Like There's no product to fix it, right? Yeah, that's the perfect thing about wheat. You know, it kind of takes its punches and, and comes about kicking. If you look at the probability of a last spring freeze, we're not out of the woods. We're not, we're still at 90%. We're still 90% confident we're gonna get a freeze. Right, in terms of the last 30 years. Yeah, so we're gonna get a freeze. I think most of the wheat that I've driven by though, will be fine. <laughs> 